Hello, let's see how to answer some GCSE biology exam questions on coronary heart disease. We're going to look at the definition of a non-communicable disease and the factors that increase the risk of coronary heart disease as well as their effects such as heart attacks or cardiac arrests. No, not that sort. Question 1 introduces coronary heart disease as a non-communicable disease and asks us to explain what a non-communicable disease is. The word communicable means able to be communicated or transferred from person to person. We often use the word communicating to mean the transfer of information from person to person or speaking. A communicable disease then is one that can be caught from other people. It must therefore be caused by a pathogen, such as a bacterium or virus, which is passed from one person to another, either through the air or via direct contact with contaminated surfaces or body fluids. People with these diseases are called infectious or contagious, since they can infect other susceptible people. Diseases like these include coughs and colds, or more serious ones like measles, flu or HIV. A non-communicable disease, on the other hand, is not caused by a pathogen and is not spread from one person to another. These diseases include things like diabetes, cancers or coronary heart diseases. This question shows an image of an artery of somebody with a coronary heart disease. It asks us to explain how coronary heart disease can cause a heart attack. We can see from the image that the build-up of fatty material on the inside of an artery makes the artery narrower. This second image makes the narrowing clearer to see. The blood flow through this artery is restricted. Or slowed right down. This photograph shows an actual artery. We can see the yellow fatty material almost halving the width of the artery. So, for three marks, we need to describe the fatty material building up on the artery wall, reducing the flow of blood. Then, we need to link the reduced blood flow to a lower level of oxygen being delivered to the heart muscle. Finally, we need to write about the heart muscle cells themselves, not getting the oxygen they need to respire, so they won't be able to release the energy they need in order to pump the blood. Now, be careful here. We have to make sure we say release energy rather than produce energy. You'll remember from physics that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but is transferred or released from one form to another. It sounds picky, I know, but you'll lose marks if you're not precise with your wording. I only have your best interests at heart, after all. The last question asks us to explain how lifestyle and medical risk factors increase the chance of developing coronary heart disease. This is a six mark question and so requires an extended written response. The mark scheme for six mark questions is different from that of other questions in that there isn't just a single correct answer. Examiners have to read the student's answer fully and then choose a level which best describes it. There are four levels of response to choose from, which are described here. To gain the top marks in this question, we need to identify some relevant risk factors and then describe how they lead to coronary heart disease. By giving at least two medical risk factors and two lifestyle risk factors and clearly stating how they lead to coronary heart disease in a well-written way, we should be able to gain all six marks without writing pages and pages of work. So, what are the risk factors that we could write about? There are medical risk factors we could choose from, and there are lifestyle risk factors. Remember, we don't need to write about all of them, just two from each section. We then need to link clearly how the risk factor could lead to coronary heart disease. The response that I've written here focuses on just two lifestyle and two medical risk factors. I've started by stating that lifestyle factors are the ways we live our lives, and by giving some examples like smoking and lack of exercise and how these can both cause obesity. I've then stated how obesity can lead to high blood pressure, fatty deposits and therefore coronary heart disease. 
I've then described medical factors as being how our medical history affects our risk of developing coronary heart disease and giving the examples of high cholesterol and medications. I've then linked these high cholesterol to fatty deposits and stated how some of the medications can cause blood vessels to become narrow before finally saying that these will both restrict blood flow to the heart. Like I said, we don't need to discuss every single risk factor, but we do need to make sure that the answers are well written, with detailed links to coronary heart disease and with good spelling, punctuation and grammar. So take heart in the fact that you've now got your finger on the pulse when it comes to answering this type of question in the future. I'm really pumped that you're learning this, and it's heartwarming to know that you've got this far through the video. As a reward, I offer you this little joke. It's not much, I know, but it is from the heart. Sorry, I'm done with the jokes now. Cross my heart. So that's it. Make sure you stay in touch. You can get some great science content, updates, or plenty of revision tips by visiting plutoniumscience.com or by following me on Twitter at PU94Science, or if you prefer, you can email me directly. Keep up the revision and good luck with the exams. Take care and don't lose heart.